Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, obviously, this is my YouTube channel, who else would you expect <laughs> to be here? <laughs> uh, I feel like I should be introducing this as the Guitar Souls, but obviously it isn't, because this isn't Mike. I was going to say this is this is someone much more handsome than Mike, but... Yeah. Well, I don't know, Mike's a pretty good looking guy. Okay, okay. I I mean, I'm the stunt double. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're all pale in comparison to me. <laughs> <laughs> So of course, yes, this is uh, Doug Cartwright, long time friend, uh, very oh. old friend from the London stomping grounds, and you, he's come for a visit. Came for a visit, yeah. And unfortunately, Mike isn't here. Uh, yeah, I didn't plan it too well, if I'm honest. The original plan was obviously see see my Scottish friends, and somehow I've just ended up stuck with this guy for the weekend. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so so people forget the Guitar Souls podcast, um, but was birthed from the Guitar Souls, which was just on my YouTube channel, and you were you were there for every one of those. I, I was in a few of them, yeah. Yeah, that, that was it, the, good, it, the basic idea, I think, was just take what we do normally and put a camera on it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I've really been wanting to do some uh, headless club videos because obviously I bought my Mayan as Hydra, and then Mike got a Goliath, uh, Ormsby Goliath, and Kieran K Mac got himself a Strandberg, and then Doug said, <laughs> "I'll get a Kiesel." Yeah. <laughs> So we got the lot. It yeah. would have been real nice to get everyone in the same video for that. But to be fair, it's actually kind of difficult just to get the two of us in the frame. So <laughs> now I'm here, I'm thinking that might not have been such yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Well, there's always next time. We can, we'll make something work yeah. somehow, somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you got a Kiesel. Yeah. And you, so you, we should probably talk about your history of guitars. You've got obviously a long history of, you've got a lot of guitars. So you've probably got more guitars than I do. They're, which is, they're, they're piling up. Mate. Yeah. I've had, I've had to put another rack in the kitchen. There's just, there's not enough space. <laughs> How for many more. are you thinking? Uh, well, I, I think I've got 22 in my house at the mm. minute. Um, yeah. If anyone wants to buy any guitars, actually, I'm going to sell some of them off. So I'll, go, I'll do a quick plug for my eBay account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Doug's got some amazing guitars, so it's probably worth checking out. Uh, but that, that tells us a lot, doesn't it? Because you want to sell a bunch of your guitars. I get the impression yeah. that you're really happy with the guitar. I feel like I've, I've done, you know, over the last... 10 years. I moved to London. I had one guitar. I sold my Marshall. I didn't even have, I didn't even have an amp when I got here. <laughs> when I got there, I was, uh, you know, getting all my money together. And somehow, 11 years later, there's, you know, I'm, I'm starting to think I need to get a smaller, smaller bed or something to make more space. You know, I, I'm struggling. Um, um, but yeah, I've had a lot of experience with different guitars and kind of really found what I like in a lot of them. And one of the main things I actually wanted to do is try and go in the headless direction. And I did have a Strandberg for yeah. uh, quite a while. In fact, I, I had a Strandberg quite early on. I had one of the uh, ones that was made in the Washburn shop. So I had that for quite a while. And then there were just a few things about that guitar that weren't really for me. Uh, and it took me a, a long time to decide that, but I did eventually decide that. And then I played uh, our friend Charlie's... Um, He's got a keys. He's the guitar player in Haken, mm -hmm. and I play. I've been looking at these already because I thought, God, that's they're appealing. And I played his, and I was, I was sold. So the the Strandberg was gone, and this was ordered, and that's kind of how it happened. And now it's here. Uh, I can imagine there might be more of them coming towards <laughs> my house, but I, I'm starting to. I the classic story is when when you've got too many guitars, is that your wife or your girlfriend starts telling you to get rid of them, or like a one in one out policy. I, my situation is getting so severe, I'm just doing that myself. <laughs> like, I don't even need an external source on that now. I'm like, I'm just telling myself that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, tell us about that, the specs on it. Why? Yeah. Why yeah. So, I it? spent a bit of time sort of deliberating on it, but a lot of the specs were just things I really wanted. One of the main things that really drew me to uh, going for the Kiesel to start with, well, I feel like the yeah, guitar is you behind the up. mic. You can hold let's, it up. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that look at that. You have hands. Yeah, there we go. Right. So I feel like one of the first things that really got me into these was neck through. I've, I've always really liked neck through guitars. Um, played a lot of bolt on guitars, but yeah, I've always sort of always come back towards the neck through thing. So that was kind of a big appealing thing. So the basic spec of it is it's, um, I'll, I'll start from the back. You can see it's um, black limber body which is kind of like, I think quite a fashionable body wood at the moment. I see quite a lot of people playing guitars made from that. Well, it's just, I'm guessing because of how it looks. Uh, I think it's quite similar to Carina. Like the, I think it's meant to be a similar wood to that. I don't really know. It's heavy as hell. It's a dense, like weighty wood, which is actually something that appealed to me on this guitar because one of the things that I didn't like so much about the Strandberg was how lightweight the thing was. Oh mate, you won't like the Ormsby. It, it was so light. 
uh, which is great. I thought that was a cool thing when I was sitting at home playing it, but then did the first gig on it. Every time I moved, it was like fly, <laughs> flying away yeah. from me. Mate, the, so, the Ormsby makes the uh, Strandberg feel like a, a block of lead. How? How? I, do, I don't know. The, I mean, it's the like Strandberg it's is basically chambered. a block of air. Yeah. So how, how that's possible? I can't. I really want to try this Ormsby because Mike's been banging on about it for a long time, and there's a lot that appeals to me about it, especially the, his, his, the color of that one. Yeah. It's pretty stunning. But he's on tour, so yeah. But he's on tour, so you know he's busy like being an actual musician. Yeah. So we'll just leave him to that. I just sit here and make memes on YouTube. Yeah, that's great. I just sit here and watch you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, carry on. Yeah. So it's the black limber body, and then I went for the seven piece neck, which is one of the more uh, expensive neck options from Kiesel. Uh But I just I was originally going to go for a five piece. It's it's walnut. I really wanted a walnut neck because I had a walnut neck on my um, Patrick Hoopsman age string years ago and I've, that neck, so stable and solid and I just think it looks cool. So I was kind of keen and then I really liked the, the maple strap, uh, maple stripes in it. Um, but now I saw the seven piece neck with purple heart and it's like, oh, <laughs> purple. <laughs> like, I'll have that. So that that's, was quite a quote cool. for you. That was Ooh, a thing. Purple. Uh, so... Oh yeah, so this is a this is obviously a much lesser spec, but seeing as we're looking at the back, got the ebony back plate, right? So this is this is I'm gonna be I'm gonna try and be as honest as I possibly can about this guitar. That's really important on this channel. What? Like you're not an art, a Kiesel artist, right? No, no, I don't you're, have any affiliation. You purchased the product, and because of that, you can give it an, like honest. An yeah, honest yeah. I, I, I really the thing is is I am gonna be incredibly positive about this guitar. You could say it's a kind of a honeymoon period, but I've had it a few weeks. And I th I'd say I've got enough experience with guitars. I have no reason to not be because if it wasn't right, it would probably You'd be know. on. Yeah, and yeah. it would be on its way out again, <laughs> yeah. which is not the case. So if I could criticize this, I am going to bring up a minor criticism. It's far too early to be really getting on it, but I'm going to forget to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about it while I'm looking at the back of the guitar. Right, got the ebony uh, uh, electronics cover on the back. That appeals to me. That I immediately pay the upgrade to get that. I want you know as much wood as possible. <laughs> I said it said in the email. I said, hey, can you do the the trem cavity cover in ebony? No. Nope. <laughs> so, why? I'm just why gonna can... jump in and say as much wood as possible, but no head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> only as much as necessary. Okay. Let's, 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 let's let me rephrase that <laughs> within the realms of what I actually need. Yeah. But I, I just don't um, look at it. Like I don't know if you can. It just looks cool that the uh, ebony. And then I've st I'm still stuck with a plastic back cover over the trim cavity, which I, you know, who cares, right? Really, it's on the. I don't even see it, let alone anyone else. Don't care. But it just struck me as odd because surely that would be so easy to do, and I'd have paid them another twenty dollars for the. <laughs> back yeah, cover. I think it's. I think it's also a shame that this um, cavity thing isn't recessed into it. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd agree with that. And actually, another thing that's struck me is like this. Obviously, is quite a modern design. And there are a lot of features that I'll point out on it that I think are really good signs of modern design. Uh, I don't understand why no one's really adopted the thing of just using magnetized ones of these now. Yeah, like why it's got do that I... on the dingwall? Yeah, oh, have you? It's really yeah. good. Yeah, um, and my friend, uh, there's a UK luthier called John Swinglehurst. He's okay. he's he did it on some of his, and um, I, at the minute I did it, I was like, why doesn't everyone do that? I don't want to have to get a screwdriver out if I ever need to get in the back. It just seems so. It's like a custom shop. Yeah, guitar. See, it seems like such a basic thing to adopt because he is quite progressive. Jeff seems quite progressive and takes ideas from other companies and adopts them or adapts them to his yep. own design. So, it, if that's the worst I've got to say about a guitar, it's probably fine. With literally, I've spent five minutes here criticizing the trem yeah, yeah. cover, so like, really, it's probably fine. But yeah, okay, that's it. I don't think I've got anything else to say about the back of it. Yeah, you can Let, you can turn it around. Yeah, let's turn it around. It's a, it's a beautiful top, and uh, so I'll I'll just say this: I don't know if the the uh, this video is going to do it justice. Doug had obviously sent me many pictures of it, um, and I thought it looked okay, well, well or cool. I thought it looked cool. Uh, then I saw it here in the flesh, yeah, and it looks it looks really cool. The satin finish on it just looks great. It really pops, and you've you've got this um, decorative wood grain design going. Yeah, down yeah. the guitar but then there's also a flame going across the side and it's a very subtle flame yeah it is but it's so rich because you get like quite a lot of different uh range of colors in it which you don't normally associate with flame maple or i don't yeah so it's it's just like a real interesting top and i personally i actually was quite happy that it came out 
uh, a little more subtle than some of the spots you see that really cover the whole thing. I just thought that looked kind of cool. Um, actually, another interesting angle that you never really see on these guitars is if you look at the way, let me see if I can hold this, like the way the um, the blend between the top and the recess here. Oh, okay. It's yeah. just kind of nice. I don't know if I'm holding that way. Yeah, no, really I don't really consider I don't know that. if it'll really come out on the camera. If I hold up my, uh, my Mayanos, like I actually love what they do with their cuts, which is... Uh, you you know that you can see a piece of the. I'm wood. having a look on the screen. I can't yeah. see. But. You can see, you, well, you've got the strip of, of oh, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. like it's like a, a natural binding. Yeah, get, yeah. Which... Actually, uh, keys will offer that as an option as okay, well. Cool. If you, if I was to get it painted, you can do the natural bind. Right. The same thing. I really like that as well. Um, in fact, I would say that I never really was a fan of body binding until mm -hmm. I started seeing guitars with that kind of. Yeah. Bind. That that does look that does yeah. look pretty attractive. I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, so it's also got seven strings, hasn't it? This one. Disgusting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's it, exactly. I, I thought, get a seven string, because I really only played seven strings for, well, four or five years. It's been pretty much my main thing. So in fact, I can't really imagine... I mean, I probably can imagine ordering a six-string version of this now. Yeah, yeah. But like, if it was the one and only, definitely it's going to be a um, it's going to be a seven string. And it has a trem on it. Yeah, it's it's got a trem. Uh, it's the first guitar I've bought with a trem in quite a long time. I do own a lot of guitars with Floyds, but I didn't really play them. Or well, I didn't I didn't play Floyds for quite a while. I got really into the fixed bridge thing. And then I just randomly decided to put a trem on it. But it was based off, I had a jam. I was playing with this band for a few months. Um, it was kind of like a jam band kind of thing. We were, we were basically meeting up and jamming and making vague plans that obviously didn't come to fruition. Uh, and it was really cool. It was I was really enjoying it because it was kind of rocky, but with real funk bass and stuff like that. I was just having a shred over it every week. It was really fun. And I took my soloist down there, mm -hmm. my Jackson, for, uh, for like just for something different one week. And I was using the Floyd and I just had this like, oh my God, where have you been all these years? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like getting back with your ex or something. I was, just there, like, just, oh my God, like every time I played something bad, I just got the bar and saved myself. And I was like, <laughs> it's like, yes. It's, so I just, I started thinking about getting a bar. And then actually I was a little dubious about it because you know, it's a different trim system. Yep. And um, I've got a mate, Pete Morris, who bought, who also ordered a Kiesel. Um, and uh, it, he got the eight string with a trim. So in my mind, I was like, I understand the appeal of it, but an eight string with a tram. So anyway, so I I tried his one out and it turned up. Uh, unfortunately, um, it was quite difficult to properly check it out because uh, Pete's got a disability. Okay. Uh, which means that all of his guitars are the wrong way around. He's, ah. he's, he's left-handed, so uh, it was it's pretty hard to properly. It's probably difficult to really get the idea of it, but the tuning stability seemed all right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit speechless on that one, so yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I tried it, and it, it came out all right. I, I was pretty impressed with it, and since I've had it, I've been really impressed with it. It's um, tuning stability is great. Yep. Very smooth action. Okay, this is the only other thing that I'm going to criticize this guitar for that I can think of. I do you wish the bar was a screw in? Like, look, it's kind of. I want it to just fall out the way. Yep. Like personally, when I play a Floyd, is there a? I have yes, it. And there's no. There's no screw at the back no. that you can access. That now way. I could, I must be honest. I haven't really done any research, but I can't see a way of altering that. That is, I can live with that. Yeah. But if I were to be a hundred percent honest, like when I like on a Floyd, I always keep it. Well, in fact, I think a Floyd, you just tighten it, and it will just automatically do that anyway, won't it? But on the Ibanez's and stuff like that, I've always done it because I like to pull it around. Wait, I'm not on screen. There we go pull it around and then the minute I stop playing I just wanted to fall out of the way so possibly I can adjust that but I can immediately see any way to do that so instead of doing any research I'm just going to criticize it on the internet <laughs> that's how that works <laughs> um, but I mean that's again that's really a minor thing to me it, it's, it's not a problem and the actual action of it is super smooth I think you'd agree and oh, yeah, yeah. stability is excellent and feels comfortable under the hand it's a hip shot or it's a hip shot design with keys or something. I think it's a hip shot. I've built them for them. And I've owned hip shot stuff before and it's always been great. So it didn't really surprise me. This is also great. Um, 
what else can I talk about? I mean, I, I'm happy to pick it up and talk, give my thoughts on it. I'm sure that's what people really want to hear, don't they? They want me to rip into it. Yeah. Yeah. Trade guitars. Great idea. Okay, so everybody watching this will know that uh, I'm a straight shooter. I'll shoot from the hip. I'll tell you what I think. Um, this is a really interesting guitar. It, it feels really interesting in the hand uh, because I've been playing the minor stuff now for quite a long time. Um, well, it's actually comparatively not a, a very long time, but uh, I'm very used to the the back of the necks mm. on this, which is like an oiled um, finish where you, you've still got the, the grain. You can feel the grain of the wood, like the pores mm, yeah, of the wood. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this isn't. This isn't a matte finish, right? Um, uh, satin. Yeah. Satin finish. And it, it's lovely. It, it feels really... This will sound like I'm insulting it, but it feels like a toy. It feels like almost plastic in your hand. And I know I don't think that's quite what you mean, though, is it? I, I, yeah, I, well, because I don't want people to think I'm saying that in a negative way. It just maybe, maybe what I'm really getting at is it feels futuristic, modern. Mm. This feels like a piece of wood, whereas this feels like like it's no longer a piece of wood. This is this is something, as I say, futuristic. This is uh, a tool used to create the most um, outrageous music. Um, that just a comment. So the first thing I did when I put it in my hand was I went. Oh, the neck on that is lovely. I could really um, comment on that as well because that was one of the actually one of the hardest spec choices for me, and and something that felt like a bit of a gamble. Because what I've been used to as well is these kind of oil finished, or the the ones where you can feel the grain. And Keys will do another option, which they call the raw tone finish, right? Which is a very thin coat, which I think would produce a bit. You can get them to just oil the neck. Right. But I actually really didn't want to go for an oiled neck because a couple of guitars that I had like that, um, were, they feel amazing. But when I was gigging, I did quite a lot of gigs on one of them in particular. And it's like all the sweat was really soaking into it. And yeah. I had to, yeah, you can re-oil it and bring it back, but it, there's a lot of maintenance involved sure. in that finish. It's a beautiful feeling at home, but I found like after I'd done three or four gigs, I was really stuck. It was really alluring the way right. the neck felt. Um, I was really tempted to do the raw tone thing because I think that's kind of what a lot, like if you think of like the Ibanez Meshuggas and that kind of thing, that's real common. I, I really like that finish, but they only offer it on Ash and Swamp okay. Ash. Now, I, I've heard rumor that you can get them to do it on other things or they're starting to offer it on other finishes now or something like that. I don't know. But I just thought, right, I'm just going to go for the satin. I just went for it. Yeah. I was like, this will probably turn out all right. And actually, when it came, I had exactly the same thoughts. You've, uh, it feels awesome. Yeah. It feels really, really good. Yeah. So it was kind of a relief to me. Yeah, when, when I say, like, plastic, I'm not, I don't mean it feels like a cheap toy. I mean, it just... It's smooth as hell. Yeah, it? yeah. It's um, it's just super cool. So, yeah, credit where credit is due on that. That's very cool. I love the top. I think the top looks great. It really does. Um, as I said earlier, I was surprised when I saw it in the flesh that I liked it even more than, than I thought I would. Um, I was I had initially went to criticise the two strap pins took issue with that I was like what's that all well, about we, we Doug should do a quick cutaway where we demonstrate that I'll cut in a picture of it yeah yeah. Doug pointed out to me that it's perfect as a stand you can put the, both of them down on the floor lean the guitar up against the wall and it's not going to fall over which is actually very clever I, I think, think it's. I think that's actually one of the main innovations <laughs> of all time probably but the, and not only is it not going to fall over there's no chance you're going to accidentally ding it or something like that because you've got the on the top there's the uh, metal, metal all the way around the back of it as well yep. so you lean it against that there's nothing that's yep. going to take a damage or show that you've done that but now we get into the actual the the thing that the, oh, it doesn't bug me but so it wasn't really an issue for me because I played this with a strap on mm. so it felt it felt right um, but the thing I really like about about well, the Strandberg in particular mm. is that cut away on the, the bottom part there yeah. where you can just sort of it doesn't matter how you sit that always puts the guitar in a nice comfortable position um, with guitars like these it, uh, especially after playing my Mayonnaise um, I got the appeal of sitting classical style with um, a headless guitar because you've got that cut out at the mm -hmm. back uh, as soon as you've done it with a headless guitar and then you go back to like a traditional like an RG or whatever you suddenly notice that big lump that, that of wood that's there um, and with this I, I always had the concern that on a guitar like this when you sit classical you're gonna, your legs are going to come into contact with the uh, tuners now, in this case, that wasn't an issue because these are actually very stiff. Um, you, I mean, you can turn them, no problem, but you know, my leg touching mm. them wasn't putting them out of tune. Uh, but because it is a trem, mm. <laughs> when I was touching it, it was either pushing the trem down or pulling it up a little bit. Um, so I had to kind of reposition myself so I wasn't um, touching yeah. that. So um, is that a design flaw? 
I feel like saying yes, but only because, if, again, if you lift the mayonnaise up, people have criticised this. But and when I sat down with it, I suddenly understood it. There's that this, bit this, of wood there. This, yeah. So there's no way to come into contact with that. And having said that, though, they don't actually offer a trem on this guitar. So um, <laughs> that's not really, not really actually benefiting you in any way because evidently these tuners are actually pretty stable and if you if you touch those i don't feel they're going to go out of tune um yeah I think yeah you're not going to brush against it and, and knock yeah. it out of the tune or something like that. yeah i'm not much of a trem player i don't own a guitar with a trem on it i've got like 16 guitars and i don't own a single trem i needed one last week and I had to drive half an hour to borrow one off a friend <laughs> so i should probably get a guitar with a trem um this trem does feel good though so i'll give it that um i don't really know what to do on a seven string though you know like yeah well, then tune it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> unless it's in John Brown's tune, and I just don't, don't really know what to say. So, yeah, all in all, I, I'm honestly extremely impressed with this guitar. Um, ooh. I was going to compare it to like to Mike's and then compare it to mine, um, but it's hard to compare it to, to Mike's. Obviously, I prefer mine because mine's mine, um, and Mike will prefer his, and you'll prefer yeah, yours. Yeah, That's yeah. the way that works. But, um, yeah, it's a very different thing to Mike's one because price-wise, this is... What, probably this is probably three or four the times the guys is as mics uh i don't know how much mics is worth to be honest so i, I think they the, retail for about 1100 1200 yeah so th well in that case this is this was uh to get it in the uk it was two grand okay so like and and even actually maybe i shouldn't mention that on on the video but the um yeah the, the, even the import costs and stuff like that were not as crippling as i was anticipating them right. being but certainly, I, I think it was just a, a he, like maybe like a, maybe hundred quid over two grand or something at yeah. tops to yeah. cover the whole cost of getting it. Yeah, which is incredible. It's really good. Right. How fast was the build time on this? Uh, one? It was super fast. I ordered it May, start of May, turned up August, mm. second second week of August, I think. So that's an incredible turnaround. Actually, I, they they told me October as well. So they got they really like powering through them. I know that. Um, They've just taken on new staff and they're expanding, I think, right. because of the orders and stuff. So they seem to be really handling the the increased demand. Yep. Um, yeah, cool. I mean, I've, I've said this to people for quite a long time, and I, especially when I was talking with Andy James about it. Uh, if you live in the States, hmm. Kiesel's a no-brainer. I, I, can't, I can't imagine why you wouldn't yeah. if you were in the States. And the, that was a, a concern for me. And like an annoyance, like uh, my friend Pete, who I mentioned who got the A-string, um, his his uh, partner is American, so they went out there to see her family, and he got the guitar delivered there, and was able to kind of, you know, avoid some taxes. Well, you know, it just is a lot more practical. To Disabled and a criminal. It's yeah, precisely. <laughs> but uh, no, not not a criminal. It's just make it's a lot more practical to just have to handle that stuff yourself than rely on. So, like for example, I ordered this guitar. The hardest thing about getting this guitar delivered was I got it delivered to my work, uh, to, to the college that I teach in. And uh, they, who was it, FedEx, thought that I was trying to import something as a business and were trying to get me to set up like a business account and like handle, handle, hand over my tax certificates and stuff. It's like, guys, it's a guitar, can I just have it? And they, they asked, that was a bit of a problem, but that was, that, that was just a mistake. I didn't end yep. up having to pay for that or something. Yeah, I, so going back to what I was saying about um... Yeah, if you live in the US, I, it's probably more of a consideration if you live in the UK or Europe, um, getting a Kiesel. Uh, but this is a great the thing. Instrument. The thing is, is that in all honesty, the actual handling of it was very good. The poster, I wouldn't be concerned about the shipping or anything. Actually, the costs of it are not as high as you m might anticipate. It is a cost to take into account. But even with the cost included, it's very good value for money compared to oh, yeah. uh, compared to, like the kind of competitive. This is pretty tricked out as in terms of specs. Yeah, uh, yeah, if yeah. You, I'd be interested actually. We should probably go on Kiesel's website. Let's try and we'll do that. Um, and I'll and I'll leave a, a note in the in the video. Um, let's go on there and try and spec out something similar to what to my miners, which yeah. is just mahogany and uh, what three piece neck, uh, five, five piece, piece, five piece five neck. Piece. Um, yeah, five piece neck. Yeah, mahogany body. Uh, what's at the top on that? So it looks like maybe poplar, is it? Eye poplar, yeah. yeah I like Did I get that right? Yeah, eye yeah, poplar. Look at that. Um, I'm sure it's eye poplar. Yeah, uh, I, I think if we were to spec out something like that, this would be um, even cheaper. Yeah. So, yeah, well the base model, if you just get the maple and get a paint job on it and stuff like that, you'd be you'd be talking 1500, I think. Yeah. So yeah, probably less. Mm. So yeah, the the value is pretty pretty crazy. Yeah, Kiesel stuff. Yeah, it's it's good value, and uh, like, I 
the sad thing is is like i can't i can't honestly say that the mayonez is in a different class it's not it they just they both play like great guitars so it, it's a it's a real tough one for me to sit here and, and give a real good justification as to why that guitar even without being as tricked out as this one is still 500 pounds more than this one um like i say i love the design feature that it's nice and I i've got to be honest i've been a lot more sold on this uh having now seen this in purpose because when i first saw this guitar i thought nah <laughs> i don't honestly i just looked at that and look right, look at it like what is that hole right and then the other thing i thought about this guitar when i first saw it was there we go this is quite bulky on the top and yeah like and that, those two things i wasn't too sure about but actually having now played this guitar and kind of seen it in the flesh and kind of adjusted to it it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good yeah it's again pretty, that, that hole good. down there makes a lot of sense yeah when you could manipulate the cable through it, yeah I if i like, if oh, i want to do that on this you've got the strap here and then the cable's going to go from there and then all the way down here to there and it's yeah. just it's it's not ideal is it yeah um, i hadn't actually considered that that's a very good point yeah so again it's only a tiny little design thing mine is but uh, bravo on it uh, so uh, closing thoughts the other thing i'd say about that versus this is my criticism of the of the hydra is that mm. it's basically just a duvel without a head yeah and the duvel is basically just an rg that says man that's on it yes yeah um <laughs> but made exceptionally well yeah made exceptionally yeah, with, well with a yeah. lot of care and attention yeah. so that guitar to me i don't really think and feel of this as like a modern progressive metal progressive rock guitar mm. this is just a, a really light ergonomic guitar yeah, yeah. um whereas this I don't know. Something about it just screams play cool modern stuff on it. It feels futuristic. I, do you know what I would that say, feels old. Do you know what I would say though? I would say that this guitar feels. I know what you mean in that it just feels like you're playing a super strat, mm. right? But it feels like a very modern super strat because it's adopted some of the things that you've seen post Ibanez, like the the super thin body. This guitar is pretty damn thin compared to. Like, I don't know if you see that, but compared to like a an rg that's that's real thin almost like a black machine thing or something but like it's, that. Al it's also as thick and as me compared to an s series so. yeah yeah it's not an s series <laughs> but it, it, it that's kind of following that trend a bit of the kind of thinner bodies the neck the neck does feel like an item it's neck doesn't it it's yeah. thin it's thin as hell which is you know i'm not complaining about that i love that kind of thing one of the things i was surprised about with um this guitar which is actually something you should maybe be interesting if you're thinking about these is that this is the this is not the standard neck profile okay they, they offer a thin neck profile right now i don't know how you feel i wouldn't describe that as a particularly thin neck right no it's, it's not, not like a skinny it's not a um, wizard no it's not a no. wizard neck at all it's still got quite a lot of bulk so the i'm, I'm really curious like i actually i was talking to um andy james about that and he was saying how the first Kiesel that they sent him had that had that neck profile and then subsequently through talking to Jeff he ended up with the regular neck profile so, so this not, is the thin so he's profile. not a fan okay. of thinner necks now I kind of know where he's like because I, I I get on great with thinner necks but as I've got older I've kind of progressed to like a, liking a, a bit more of a shoulder on it yep. and a bit wider so I kind of knew what he was talking about but then I also played a, another Kiesel where someone told me that's thin neck profile I was like right I better go for that and it's common it feels yeah, real real good, good to me that, good. i wouldn't describe that as an extremely thin neck so I, i'm really curious like andy i want to go on your guitar mate because i want to want to find what the what the uh the big ones are like yeah. you know cool so there we go kiesel vader seven um heading over to kiesel's website and check them out and see what you think mm. um thank you very much for letting us see it doug and uh, talking to us about it uh, where can people Sorry. find out more information about you who you are and what you do uh, I've got a website, dougcartwright.com. There you go. I even I even updated it. Yeah, I've not, not really with any content not over really over a year. I've got I've got. Uh, yeah, there's not really anything to plug at the minute. To be honest, I, I I might do something at some point. Well, you've got you've got music that is good and is worth checking out. Yeah, you don't want to Thanks. plug it. Uh, oh, you mean my band? Yeah, I did have a band. Yeah, I put a record out at the start of the year. If you like, you've put two records out. Yeah, and they're both good. Thanks. Yeah, uh, there's one. There's one I put out at the start of the year. Uh, the band is called Amid the Baron and Lost, which is a long band name. We put out a record called Shadow Self Psalms, which is in a long January. name. It's also long and slightly difficult to say. Uh, <laughs> and it's it's it pretty it's pretty heavy. But if you like shred and people shouting aggressively, uh, and seven strings, yeah, probably give it a go. It's on Spotify. 
yeah. and basically it's on everything. So amazing, that's a, a good one. Some, uh, I think they were Russian. Probably let's blame the Russian this guy has was uploaded, hacker, wasn't uploaded it? the entire album on YouTube as a, as an album stream. Like thanks, with, thanks, with, man. With, with a disclaimer about how he's just supporting the scene or so. It's like, dude, we're like an independent band. How are you possibly supporting the scene? But anyway, at least the Russians like it. No, but now so, now loads and loads of people know who you are, so they can come see you play live, can't they? And that's how you make your money nowadays. Yeah. So that, well, it, it it would be if I was playing live. Yeah. <laughs> <As> a, <laughs> In Russia, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, hit him up if you ever want a, a decorative amid the barren and lost coaster, because you know, like much like me, I've got about three hundred Hellcat Molly coasters in boxes. Yeah, oh my so. god, I'll tell you what, it's it's actually quite fun because my coffee table's in much better condition because there's no, you know, there's so many of these things around to put <laughs> put your beer on. That no, you know, people come round, you're like, wait. Have one of these. Yeah, have a coaster. <laughs> yeah, you too could own one of those if you email me. Yeah, so so do it. Reach out to him. Check out Amid the Baron and Lost. Um, Doug's a, a good guitar player and a good guy. So yeah, check him out. Um, Thanks, yeah, mate. No worries. That's probably the nicest thing you've ever said about anyone on this channel. I know. Shame about the haircut, though. <laughs> I thought we'd get through the whole video. No, there, there it was, right at the end. Yeah, and he's wearing a cardigan. I yeah, to say. It's, it's just been full on abuse. <laughs> Full on abuse this whole weekend. You, you abused me enough when I got my hair cut, so it's, quite, it's actually payback. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, I have to put my hand up to that. I did, <laughs> I did, I did. So we're, we're equal on that one now. We're cool. equal. So yeah, thanks very much, and we'll see you for another video soon. Hang on, wait. We need to do the uh, the traditional sign off. Um, what? Until next time. Uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>